Hello and welcome back to another episode of the mini series where I show you how to create a customized ISO image, in this case Windows 7. So today I am taking a look at Win Toolkit, which is an alternative to RT7 Lite. It allows you to customize Windows 7 ISO, but also you can customize some of the newer ISOs but I'm not gonna go into it. I'll be taking a look at this program, I'll show you a little bit how it's used and we'll compare it to RT7 Lite, how does it go toe to toe, is it better or worse, what features does it have, so let's open it up and jump into the program. As soon as you open it, you get this prompt that asks you to update DISM, which works better with Windows 10 images. I'm not gonna do that now as I'm not editing Windows 10. So let's see what we have. I'm gonna guide you a little bit through the program. So first you can click on the version, you have check for updates, open the forum, report bugs, stuff like that. Good thing about this program, supposedly, it's actually a little bit up to date. Doesn't say exactly dates when this was updated, but comparing it to RT7 Lite, which is, I believe, still in beta, 2.6 beta, something like that, which hasn't been updated at all, this one is a little bit more updated, but let's see if it's better. Next, we have instructions button, which if you click, it opens up their forum with a couple of guides to use this program, so if you run into issues, you will most likely find help on their forums. Next, there is downloads. You can download a bunch of things going through all of these, uh, but a couple of things that are interesting is download integration add-ons. So you can integrate programs, some other utilities into the ISO itself. Clicking on this button takes you to the forum as well. And it takes you to the section where you can download a bunch of add-ons. So here is the forum Win Toolkit add-ons. And if I scroll down, you can see we have, for example, Visual C Redistributable, Microsoft Net Framework. What is this? I don't know. We have Image Burn, Unlocker, CPU-Z, WinRAR, maybe even some updates, I don't know, there's a bunch of stuff here that was already created, so you can download it off of here, or you can make your own add-ons slash programs that you integrate. I'm gonna explain that as well, but just have in mind that basically programs are add-ons, in fact, when you see what, we, what else we have. So basically you have a couple of options here, go through them if you want to, but next interesting thing is tools. So converters, imaging, Installers, miscellaneous add-on maker. You can click there and use this little tool to convert program installers into an add-on. Simply fill out the name of the program, the version, description, who created this, architecture, the website. Then from copy files, you go add file, copy from, you find your executable file. So for example, here I have 7-zip. You open it, then where, where you want this to be copied. In this case, it has a bunch of folders you might recognize the names. So for example, you have program files. Do you want the installation to ba basically uh, appear in program files or in program files x68? Usually you want it to be in program files. You click add file. Copy folders, you can skip that. I believe you can use this for portable programs. Import registry, you can skip that. Delete, you can even skip that. Shortcut, you can add the description, the name. For example, if it's 7-zip, we say this is a archive program, something like that. You can change the icon, hotkey, and this is where, un under destination, it tells you where the icon will or the shortcut will be added. On the desktop, it's going to be called 7zip.ink, I believe. And there we go. You click add and that's it. Next, we have some commands that can be added and variables. Once again, for the most part, you can take a look at the forum. There are a bunch of guides. But once you're done, essentially, you click, uh, I believe, save. Oh, I didn't put the name of the add-on. We click save and now it's asking us to actually save this as an add-on. So I already did that. You see 7zip.wa and you click save and that's it. So that's a little guide how to use the program, but once again, forum and there's a bunch of stuff. I'm skipping options, self-explanatory and donate. Let's take a look at the, these uh, tabs we have here, what exactly they are, what's going on here. So really quickly, these tabs are not sort of a... Don't look at this as a level up, to say so, where every new level has everything from the previous level. That's not the case. Advanced doesn't have options that are included in basic. These are just tabs that, are, just for some reason, are named basic, intermediate and advanced. Let's see what each tab features. First tab features all-in-one integrator. You have a bunch of explanation what it is, but it allows you to integrate a bunch of stuff into the ISO itself. This is the thing that we'll be using for the most part. ISO Maker, you use that at the end. Also USB Boot Prep, you can use that at the end. Once again, you can read what they are. 
intermediate. This, these are a couple of very useful tools here as well. So for example, we can integrate both 32-bit and 64-bit versions of the operating system and its versions. We can have all of those in both uh, architectures. So 32-bit and 64-bit. If you use this particular tool, I'm not going to use that. Not interested in that. Unattended creator, we will use that as well. We have Wim Manager, once again self-explanatory, and then Advanced Component Removal and Registry Editor, very interesting tools. And finally, some updates. If you want to keep it up to date, it's up to you, but I'm not going to do that. So let's go through all of these that we will use. First, I start with All-in-One Integrator. When I click it, Wim Manager opens up. And what this manager does is, for me, it automatically finds my ISO image. So here it is, it tells me where it is, where it's extracted. So if you already have it extracted, that's how it works. You can also click browse and find your ISO. You can see that you have a bunch of other options, so it's up to you. One thing to note, there is a button that says remove IE.CFG. This will unlock this image as it says, so you can install all editions, so starter, uh, professional ultimate all of those will be included but I don't want that I just want Windows 7 ultimate it's here I double click on it preset list opens up in this case I'm just going to click skip no presets here we have all-in-one integrator let's take a look at it basic add-ons this is where we can now actually add the add-on that we created earlier into our ISO click plus and locate your add-on and open and here it is it's right there integrated next we have drivers gadgets theme packs all of these things are done in the same manner as well as updates and wallpapers one thing to note with this program is that there is no option to select default wallpaper however in rt7 Lite you can do that you can choose a custom wallpaper and set it as a default desktop background so every time you install or reinstall the operating system using customized iso that wallpaper will be applied as desktop background. You might have noticed that I've skipped tweaks. That's because there are a couple of things to look at there. For, th for the most part, if you hover over any of these, there is explanation. Or if you click, you have description with explanation. So I'm not really going to go into details as for the most part, you will be able to figure these out. Couple of things, however. If you see in the columns over here, we have Win 10. That means this particular option is exclusive to Windows 10. Since we are doing Windows 7, we can skip that. Another thing, going to desktop and expanding, we have options show computer, control panel, network, and user folder icons on desktop. This doesn't exist in RT7 Lite. So that's one thing, one reason why I like this program. However, still, let me keep going and we'll get to it. So you have a bunch of options that you can basically go through. Feel free to browse through all of them. I'm not going to go into detail as like I've said. Next we have advanced. Here we can remove components. So just browsing through all of these you have a bunch of things. One thing to note is inbox games. These are your regular games like Spider Solitaire, Solitaire Chess and some others. The issue is you cannot really select what games you want to remove. You have to remove all of them. So here we have inbox games and internet games. Once again, cannot select specific games to be removed, all of them or none of them. But you can use RT7 Lite to select specific games that you want to remove. So I believe slowly you are seeing how both of these programs are very incomplete and different. None of them have all the options that you need. So you maybe might need to switch between them and use them for what they offer. So anyways, for the most part, you can just look through all of these. It's easy to understand what these are. If you are wondering what some of these options are, simply click start and type it in and see what you are removing. Next, we have VLite. For example, you can remove uh, speech and natural languages, which for example, I don't use. You can remove some themes. Yeah, a bunch of stuff that you can do. Files, you can integrate some text documents or whatever files you want to include. Services, which you can actually turn off, disable, do whatever you want, set them as automatic. You have default values as well. You'll notice once again that, I don't know if you have been noticing throughout this guide, I might, I should have probably mentioned it, but on the left side, you have a bunch of buttons from each one of these tabs. And you have this button, which actually says Black Viper safe. The next one is Black Viper tweaked. And the last one, Black Viper bare bone. You might have remembered that in RT7 Lite video, we also had these same options. So you can click on any of these and apply these options. However, one thing that I'm noticing is I am not exactly sure do these uh, does this actually get changed. So you'll notice that I'm selecting bare bones and I say, say yes. 
do I want to continue? But nothing really gets changed. So I'm actually wondering, does anything get changed? There's also up here, maybe I click there. No, nothing really changes. Maybe it does, but I cannot see it visually. So who knows if this even works. Next we have, we can actually integrate some silent installs. Not gonna do that. Once again, feel free to check out the forum. Finally, we have some options. For the most part, self-explanatory. This uh, program does say hover your mouse over an item to see a description tooltip. However, if I do, there really are no tooltips. So you can see, once again, even this program, e even it supposedly is up to date, but it's still incomplete. Anyways, that's all there is to it. I believe I went through all of the options. Once you are done, feel free to click start and wait for this program to finish uh, integrating. Just check the, the status bar down here while it's doing its thing. So next we do intermediate, we have unattended creator. You might have noticed like RT7 Lite, it has very similar options, so you should not have that much trouble going through these. Clicking the serial will reveal some interesting information, so feel free to check what's underneath there. Also, you can add users, so that's that. Under advanced, we have component removal. It's going to once again open up the Vim Manager. Here is the image that I wanted to edit, as well as the addition. It's getting packages. So here we are in the component removal. Once again, you might have noticed that we already did see a component removal, as once again here are internet and the inbox games, as well as some other things. So it's pretty similar to the previous button. I don't know why there is another one, but that's that. By the way, if you do see this window, you have a couple of options to save and rebuild, save changes, discard changes, but also keep it mounted. And that's about it. I'm just going to click keep mounted. We also have Registry Editor. If you click there, once again, the Win Manager, and it's going to ask you to select the image. And over here, you can actually, for example, double click here, and it's actually going to open up a Registry Editor for this ISO. This is not for your computer, don't worry. You can change that. You can import some registry files if you want to. So that is that as well. So for the most part, we are done. Once you are done with all the changes, you do whatever you want, you click ISO Maker. Next, you select the folder. So I'm going to select this particular folder and then under ISO output, I click browse and I can name my ISO test with win toolkit one and we can save that. And you can also, I guess, give it a label. I'm just going to go Windows 7, rebuild the image. It's going to show the CMD. Also, you have some advanced options under advanced. For some reason, I have to select either of these. I'm going to select BIOS and UFI and then you can click create. And I'm just going to click yes. And there we go. My ISO has been created. So that's like the process that goes into using Win Toolkit. For the most part, a little bit tedious, just like with RT7 Lite. But I think you can see how none of these programs are really perfect. They don't cover everything. But you just have to pick either of these and see which one works for you. One very important thing to note with Win Toolkit, you must unmount the image after using the program. If you just close the program, that does not unmount the image. To unmount the ISO image, you click Intermediate, Win Manager, and after it recovers the mount, you need to click on the image that's on the list and click the Unmount button. Then you have the options what to do. I just, for example, click Discard Changes if I don't want any changes to be saved. And there we go. That pretty much dismounts or unmounts the image and now everything is just fine. I can close the program. So that does it for this video. In the upcoming videos, I'll be taking a look at how to install the custom ISO that I created with RT7 Lite on a virtual environment program, whichever one you prefer. And then we'll be taking a look at how to customize Windows XP and some other operating systems. Finally, thank you so much for your time and attention. Do subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And uh, maybe like, comment, you know, leave something down there. I like to read comments and I'll see you guys in future episodes. Priest, signing out. Should have brought my coat at the end of the line on my shit untold Best of a lot, used to be waiting for something or someone to give me my spot God only show you the way, it's all up to the plan and the paper and people yeah. you brought I learned what I thought, I hope that they notice and give us a shit